Hi, everyone. Just wanted to check in before we get to today's episode. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, if you're not and you feel that you need to talk with somebody, and, but you're not in crisis, please feel free to write me at uh, Mindset Matters Podcast One at gmail.com. Um, I'm here and I would love to hear from you. Also, I would love it if you visited the interactive website. It's Mindset Matters Podcast One. Dot com, And on the website, you'll find a microphone where you can leave a voicemail. You can answer the prompt, what gives you hope? Or you can say anything you would like about previous episodes um, or something that's on your heart and mind that would be uplifting and supportive to our other listeners. So um, I hope you join the podcast in some way. I want to shout out to the following countries um, that have joined our listener base we have listeners from the Russian Federation, Bangladesh, India, Bulgaria, Israel, Brazil, Canada, and Uzbekistan. So welcome. Um, today's episode is for my Australian friends. This is going to be about one of their heroes. Um, great guy with a great hero heart who passed away too soon, um, Steve Irwin. So I hope you stay on to listen to today's episode. In the heart of the untamed Australian outback, where danger lurks at every turn, one man fearlessly danced with death and wrestled with the world's most fearsome creatures. His name was Steve Irwin, but to the world he was known as the Crocodile Hunter. Join us on a journey into the wild and captivating life of a man who turned his passion for wildlife into a heart-pounding adventure in an effort to advance the cause of animal conservation. Welcome to the extraordinary world of Steve Irwin, where every encounter was a heartbeat away from being a tale of triumph or peril. Welcome to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual. This is episode 12, The Courage to be a Conservationist, the Hero Heart of Steve Irwin. Amid the lush landscapes of Upper Ferntree Gully, a suburb of Melbourne, a remarkable life was about to unfold. Stephen Robert Irwin, born on February 2nd, 1962, the very day his mother Lynette celebrated her 20th birthday. With English and Irish roots coursing through both his parents' veins and a touch of Swedish heritage on his mother's side, young Steve was destined for a life deeply connected to nature. His family tree held its own adventures, with his great-great-grandfather, Joseph Irwin, making the journey from Dublin to settle in the wilds of Tasmania, Australia, in the 1870s. Growing up, Steve found himself not alone but surrounded by two sisters, Joy and Mandy, who would undoubtedly share in his love for the wild. As a child, Steve's world changed dramatically in 1970, when his parents decided to embark on a new chapter of their lives, moving to the enchanting landscapes of Queensland. It was here that Steve's educational journey began, attending Landsborough State School and later Calondra State High School. But it was outside the classroom where his true education thrived. Steve often described his father, Bob Irwin, as a wildlife expert with a profound interest in herpetology, the study of reptiles and amphibians. His mother, Lynn, on the other hand, was a wildlife rehabilitator, nurturing injured creatures back to health. Together, they embarked on a mission that would not only shape their lives, but also create a lasting legacy in Steve. Upon their move to Queensland, Bob and Lynn embarked on an extraordinary endeavor, birthing the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. It was within this unique environment that Steve's childhood was anything but ordinary. Surrounded by crocodiles and a mesmerizing array of reptiles, he was primed for a life's journey that would lead him to become the world-renowned crocodile hunter. Immersed in the enchanting world of the park, 
Irwin's journey unfolded with a zest for the wild that would leave an indelible mark. He didn't merely grow up there, he thrived amidst a whirlwind of activities that set his heart racing and his hands busy. Daily animal feeding, care, and maintenance tasks were his classroom, and the creatures he tended were his teachers. On his sixth birthday, a spectacular gift ignited his passion even further, a towering 12-foot scrub python. This slithering giant became both a friend and a formidable challenge for young Steve, the kind of gift that would leave most kids wide-eyed in wonder. But Steve was no ordinary child. By the age of nine, under the expert guidance of his father, he had already developed an encyclopedic knowledge of reptiles. It was at this tender age that he embarked on a remarkable rite of passage, venturing into the realm of crocodiles. With his father's watchful eye and extensive wisdom as his shield, he began to handle these prehistoric predators. At that same age, Steve faced his first primal wrestling match with a crocodile, proving that courage ran as wild in his veins as the creatures he encountered. His journey became a testament to his dedication to these animals and his unshakable determination to protect them. Steve's enthusiasm extended well beyond the borders of his family park. At just nine years old, he lent his youthful vigor to Queensland's East Coast Crocodile Management Program as a volunteer. In this role, he courageously captured over 100 crocodiles, some of which were relocated to safer habitats, while others found a permanent home at the family park. One day, in the vast expanse of Queensland's coastline, amidst the glistening waters, an extraordinary discovery unfolded during a fishing trip with his dad in 1997. Steve, alongside his father, stumbled upon a treasure of nature, a new species of turtle, unknown to science until that moment, graced their path. With the privilege of bestowing a name upon this newfound marvel, Steve's heart led him to a deeply personal choice. He christened the species Irwin's Turtle, a loving tribute to his own family, who had shared in the thrill of the discovery. In 1991, Steve assumed the mantle of park management, a pivotal moment that would define his life's work. The park, which had been a symbol of his family's dedication to wildlife, was reborn as the iconic Australia Zoo in 1998. From here, his journey continued, and the world would soon come to know the man who would leave an indelible mark on the realm of wildlife conservation. Guided by Steve's visionary spirit, a tapestry of initiatives flourished under his passionate leadership. What began as a small wildlife park evolved into a multifaceted empire dedicated to the preservation of our natural world. In the heart of the land down under, in 1991, a fateful encounter changed the course of two lives forever. Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, and Terry Raines, an American naturalist from Oregon, found their worlds colliding in a story that reads like a wildlife romance. Terry had journeyed all the way to Australia, exploring wildlife rehabilitation facilities, and decided to pay a visit to the zoo that Steve was so passionately dedicated to. Little did she know that this visit would lead to a love story that would capture the world's imagination. According to the couple, it was a classic case of love at first sight, an electric connection that defied distance and borders. Recalling that extraordinary moment, Terry expressed, quote, I thought there was no one like this anywhere in the world. He sounded like an environmental Tarzan, a larger-than-life superhero guy, end quote. Their bond was so profound that within a mere four months, they took the plunge into a lifelong commitment. On a beautiful day in Eugene, Oregon, on June 4, 1992, they exchanged vows, marking the beginning of a love story as wild and vibrant as the creatures they dedicated their lives to. Together, they embraced the adventures of life and the wild, welcoming two beautiful children into the world. 
Their daughter, Bindi Sue Irwin, born on July 24, 1998, bore a name that was a loving tribute to Steve's favorite animals. Bindi, the saltwater crocodile, and Suey, the Staffordshire bull terrier, left their indelible marks on their hearts. Their son, Robert Clarence Irwin, born on December 1st, 2003, carried a name that honored both of their fathers. Bob, Steve's father, and Clarence, Terry's father, were sources of inspiration and strength for the couple. The Irwin family's journey was a living testament to their passion for wildlife and their love for each other, a love story that unfolded in the heart of the wild and touched the hearts of people all over the world. Who knew that Steve and Terry's honeymoon would spark the beginning of a TV adventure? Not your typical honeymoon, Steve and Terry embarked on an adventure like no other. Their love story intertwined with the heart-pounding beats of the wild. Instead of tropical beaches or romantic getaways, their newlywed days were filled with the adrenaline of trapping crocodiles together. It was a test of love and bravery that would set the stage for an extraordinary journey. As they grappled with reptilian giants, little did they know that their honeymoon would be the raw material for something extraordinary. The lens of John Stainton captured their fearless escapades, crafting the very first episode of a TV show that would soon become a global sensation, The Crocodile Hunter. In 1996, this captivating series made its debut on Australian TV screens, and like a powerful river, it flowed into North American homes the following year. With its magnetic pull, it soon ensnared the hearts and minds of viewers worldwide. The Crocodile Hunter was a sensation, captivating audiences not only in the United States and the UK, but also in over 130 other countries. Steve's exuberance and infectious enthusiasm coupled with his unmistakable broad Australian accent and signature cocky shorts, became iconic. His catchphrase of, Crikey, echoed through living rooms across the globe, instantly recognizable and beloved. His magnetic presence also graced television screens with the hit series that bore his name, fostering a global appreciation for wildlife and conservation. Not content with mere admiration, Steve established the Steve Irwin Conservation Foundation, later reborn as Wildlife Warriors, an organization that fought relentlessly to protect endangered species and their habitats. Back at his beloved Australia Zoo, things were expanding and it became a realm of wonders, featuring the iconic animal planet Crocosium, where nature's most formidable creatures took center stage. The rainforest aviary offered a lush sanctuary for a stunning array of birds, while the tiger temple became a symbol of hope for these magnificent felines. But Steve's dreams reached even further. He shared his aspirations of opening an Australia zoo in the shimmering desert of Las Vegas, Nevada, bringing a taste of the wild to the heart of the entertainment capital. He contemplated similar ventures on distant shores, leaving no corner of the world untouched by his fervor for wildlife education and conservation. Steve was more than a name. He was a force of nature, a tireless guardian of the wild, and an inspiration to us all. Steve was no ordinary conservationist. He wasn't one to stand on a soapbox and lecture the world about saving the environment. Instead, he had a unique and infectious way of kindling a passion for nature in the hearts of those who watched and listened. His belief was simple but profound. To protect our planet, one didn't need to be a preacher, but a storyteller, sharing the exhilaration of the natural world. He understood that by igniting excitement in others, he could awaken a collective desire to safeguard the Earth's precious treasures. Irwin's heart bled for endangered animals, those vulnerable creatures teetering on the edge of existence, and he wept for the destruction of their homes through rampant land clearing. For him, conservation wasn't an afterthought. It was the very core of his mission. He once declared, quote, I consider myself a wildlife warrior. My mission is to save the world's endangered species, end quote. 
His commitment extended beyond words and deeds. Irwin invested in large tracts of land in various corners of the world, including Australia, Vanuatu, Fiji, and the United States. He envisioned these expanses as havens akin to national parks, where wildlife could flourish, unburdened by the encroachment of human activity. In his unique way, he championed the idea that each individual held the power to make a difference, reinforcing that collective actions, no matter how small, could create waves of change. Steve wasn't just a conservationist. He was a charismatic messenger of hope, urging the world to unite in protecting the planet he so dearly loved. But Irwin was not content with just one initiative. His heart was as expansive as the wilderness he loved. He played a pivotal role in the birth of the International Crocodile Rescue, safeguarding those ancient reptiles. In memory of his beloved mother, Lynn, who tragically lost her life in a car crash in 2000, he established the Lynn Irwin Memorial Fund, a living tribute to the woman who had inspired his deep love for wildlife. And then there was the Iron Bark Station Wildlife Rehabilitation Facility, a place of healing for countless injured animals, a testament to his unyielding commitment to wildlife welfare. Beyond the borders of his initiatives, Steve was a fierce advocate for ethical tourism, imploring people to embrace considerate travel. He abhorred the illegal poaching trade, urging the world not to support it by purchasing items like turtle shells or shark fin soup. His voice rang out, a clarion call to protect the creatures he cherished, reminding us that our choices held the power to shape the world for the better. Steve Irwin wasn't just a wildlife enthusiast, he was a force for change, a champion of a world where humans and nature could coexist in harmony. But the legacy didn't stop there. In 2009, another incredible Australian creature found itself in the spotlight. This time, it was a species of air-breathing land snail that earned the moniker Crikey Steve Irwini, a fitting nod to the man who had brought the world of wildlife and adventure closer to us all. Steve's profound connection to the natural world extended beyond the cameras, and these discoveries were a testament to his enduring impact on the world of science and exploration. Wildlife Warriors is a nonprofit organization founded by Steve and his wife Terry in 2002. The organization is dedicated to the conservation and protection of wildlife and their habitats around the world. It serves as a tribute to Steve's legacy and his lifelong commitment to wildlife conservation. The mission of Wildlife Warriors encompasses a wide range of activities and initiatives aimed at safeguarding the natural world. One of their primary goals is to rescue and rehabilitate injured, orphans, or endangered animals. The organization operates the Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital, which provides state-of-the-art veterinary care to a diverse range of wildlife species. Since its inception, the hospital has treated thousands of animals, including koalas, kangaroos, sea turtles, and various bird species. In addition to animal rescue and rehabilitation, Wildlife Warriors places a strong emphasis on a wildlife conservation and habitat protection. The organization supports numerous conservation projects, both in Australia and internationally. These projects focus on preserving endangered species and their ecosystems, as well as conducting research to better understand and conserve wildlife populations. Education and public outreach are also central to the work of Wildlife Warriors. The organization believes that raising awareness and educating the public about the importance of wildlife conservation is crucial for achieving long-term success. They conduct educational programs, workshops, and events to inspire people of all ages to take an active role in protecting the natural world. Furthermore, Wildlife Warriors has a global reach and collaborates with other conservation organizations, governments, and communities to tackle pressing environmental issues. They work to combat wildlife trafficking, address habitat destruction, and advocate for policies that support conservation efforts.
On September 4, 2006, Steve Irwin, the world-famous wildlife conservationist and television personality, met an unfortunate and untimely end in a tragic encounter with a stingray while filming in the Great Barrier Reef. Irwin was filming a documentary series titled Ocean's Deadliest with his friend and underwater cinematographer Justin Lyons. The duo was in the waters near Bat Reef off the coast of Queensland, Australia, on a mission to showcase the beauty and wonder of some of the ocean's most extraordinary creatures. As they were exploring the marine world, they encountered a large stingray. It is important to note that stingrays are generally considered docile creatures and are not known to be aggressive. However, the situation took an unexpected turn when the stingray felt threatened. In a rare and tragic event, the stingray's defensive response was to strike out. The stingray's barb, a sharp spine located at the base of its tail, pierced Steve Irwin's chest, causing massive trauma. Despite the best efforts of his crew and the emergency services that responded quickly, Steve could not be saved. He passed away due to the severity of his injuries. The news of his passing sent shockwaves around the world leaving a void in the realm of wildlife conservation and a profound sense of loss among his countless fans. His life and career were a testament to his passion for wildlife, education, and conservation. While his death was a tragic and rare event, it served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the risks that dedicated individuals like Steve face in their pursuit of understanding and protecting the natural world. Steve's legacy lives on, not only through his work, but also through the generations of people he inspired to appreciate and conserve the wonders of the animal kingdom. News of his passing reverberated with profound sadness, touching the hearts of fans, the media, governments, and nonprofit organizations. The outpouring of grief was a testament to the profound impact that he had had on the world, not just as a wildlife enthusiast, but as a genuine, larger-than-life personality. In a private farewell on September 9, 2006, Steve was laid to rest in a solemn ceremony at Australia Zoo, the place he had poured his heart and soul into. Then, on September 30, a public memorial service was held at Australia Zoo's 5,500-seat crocosseum. This tribute was broadcast live, drawing an estimated 300 million viewers from around the world. It was a testament to the enduring legacy of a man who had captured our hearts and left an indelible mark on the realm of wildlife conservation. On the 15th of November each year, a remarkable celebration comes to life, honoring the indomitable spirit of Steve. This special day, known as Steve Irwin Day, was meticulously chosen because it aligns with the birthday of one of Irwin's beloved creatures, a magnificent tortoise hailing from the Galapagos Islands. But this day isn't just about cake and candles, it's a worldwide call to action. Across the globe, individuals unite to raise funds for Wildlife Warriors, the organization that continues Irwin's vital conservation work. Their efforts become a loving tribute to the man who fearlessly dedicated his life to safeguarding the wonders of the natural world. Terry Irwin, along with their children, Bindi and Robert, have continued to lead and expand the efforts of wildlife warriors. Their dedication and passion for wildlife conservation have enabled the organization to continue making a significant impact on the protection of wildlife and their habitats. The legacy of Wildlife Warriors is not only a testament to the Irwin family's unwavering commitment to conservation, but also an inspiration for people around the world to become active participants in the preservation of our planet's incredible biodiversity. Through their tireless work, Wildlife Warriors carries on the mission of Steve Irwin, ensuring that future generations can continue to marvel at and cherish the beauty and diversity of the natural world. Steve's impact on Australia and the world extended far beyond the boundaries of the wild. In 2001, the Australian government recognized his exceptional contributions by awarding him the Centenary Medal. 
This prestigious honor was a testament to his dedicated service in the realms of global conservation and Australian tourism. In 2007, the Logie Hall of Fame welcomed Steve Irwin into its hallowed ranks. Even in death, his presence and influence continued to reverberate, leaving an indelible mark in the annals of Australian television and culture. Steve Irwin wasn't just a wildlife warrior, he was a cultural icon and a global inspiration. In a distant corner of the world, the spirit of Steve Irwin continued to ripple through the hearts of those he inspired. The Rwandan government in May 2007 unveiled a touching tribute to his unwavering commitment to wildlife conservation. They decided to name a baby gorilla in his honor, a symbolic gesture that echoed his impact on the global stage. Meanwhile, across the vast landscape of India, another homage was in the making. The state government of Kerala unveiled the Crocodile Rehabilitation and Research Center at the Nayar Wildlife Sanctuary, christening it with Steve Irwin's name. It was a recognition of his tireless dedication to the world of crocodiles and reptiles. In the wake of his untimely departure, the world's voices rose in chorus to honor Steve Irwin, casting him as a modern-day Noah, a custodian of Earth's diverse creatures. Mark Townend, the CEO of RSPCA Queensland, bestowed this remarkable title upon the man who fearlessly walked with the animals. Across the seas, British naturalist David Bellamy hailed Irwin's talents, celebrating him not only as a daring media performer, but as a keen natural historian. Irwin's prowess lay not just in wrestling crocs, but in peeling back the layers of nature's mysteries for all of us to see. In Canada, renowned environmentalist David Suzuki paid his own tribute to Irwin's extraordinary legacy. He acknowledged that fear and misunderstanding often stood as barriers to conservation. But Steve shattered these barriers by revealing the beauty and significance of creatures that many deemed nuisances or horrors. Through his passion and knowledge, Irwin became a beacon of education and conservation, reminding us that to save our world, we must first come to understand and appreciate it. Steve Irwin, a man who turned fear into fascination and nuisance into necessity, emerged as an iconic figure in the realms of education and wildlife protection. In the following clip, we're going to listen to Steve himself describing what he felt was his mission. See you as this, this larger than life Steve Irwin. Yeah. In some ways, a, a one dimensional, almost cartoon character. But what they perhaps don't know is you've bought huge tracts of land in Australia, Vanuatu, yeah. Fiji, US. Why have you done that? I'm a conservationist through and through, Andrew. That's, uh, that's why I was put on this planet. Easily the greatest threat to the wildlife globally is the destruction and annihilation of habitat. So I've gone, right, well, how do I fix that? Well, making a quid here. People are keen to give me money over there. I'll buy it. I'll buy habitat. And I reckon the only thing wrong... Now, how's this? The only thing wrong with, you know, wildlife in Australia is that I don't own it. Now, I could imagine how many kangaroos and crocodiles I could have if I owned Australia. It's, um... My wife is an American, so she's got this, uh... She's, um... You know, she's a good capitalist and um, she's very clever with money. Me, I'm not that clever and I don't really give a rip, but uh, she is. And um, so whenever we get a, a, um, enough cash and enough uh, and, a, and a chunk of land that we're passionate about, bang, we buy it. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to set an example to the world that um, every single person can make a difference particularly those in the, um, in the political arena, um, those that have zoological facilities, any, you know, multinationals, any millionaires. They can all make a difference by buying chunks of land. And in addition to that, every single person, man, woman and child, no matter what walk of life you're in, whether you're a, um, a fisherman, a janitor, um, Steve Earl and the croc hunter, you can make a difference in wildlife by simply not purchasing wildlife products. Because today, Andrew, the wildlife perpetrators, they're hard to spot, mate. But what it is, 
these wildlife perpetrators now kill animals and call it sustainable use. That, oh, let's kill crocs, turn them into belts. That's sustainable, you know? That isn't sustainable. Since when has killing wildlife saved anything? So I, I'm a bit of a, you know, I'm a wildlife warrior through and through. And, um, and, 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 you know, buying land is, you know, A, means that we're going to be able to get animals back if and or when they become highly endangered. And, and, and B is getting out into the world, taking you, the audience, with me, having an adventure and, and, be, and making it exciting. Otherwise, you know, you're stuck with the demographics that, say, David Attenborough's got, which is a bit smaller than what I got, and, and, and changing people's opinions on wildlife. How's this? For the first time in history, mate, I've just been involved with an issue where people were worried about the welfare of a shark. How's that? For the first time in history. Yay! Astounding. Absolutely astounding. A tiger shark. And um, admittedly, the tiger shark was doing great, but her name was Bonnie. She was 14 foot, and, you know, I helped capture her and release her back into the wild. The first time in history, people are seeing crocodiles and snakes as, as animals that have welfare issues which is fantastic. So I believe if I can secure enough habitat, then there will always be places for the animals to go when they've been annihilated throughout their habitat. Because basically, mate, the human population is going off. It's just a bit too rapid for the old um, Mother Earth to keep up with, mate. And um, so this is my way of helping her out. If there's one thing that I, Steve Irwin, would want to be remembered for, it's be remembered for passion and enthusiasm. Conservation is my job, my life, my whole persona. In my life dealing with wildlife, I've been gored, clawed, chomped, bitten, savaged, jumped on, whacked, peed on, even groped. And every single time it's been my fault. If I get bitten, I've made the mistake. I knew what I was up against when I went in on that animal. And it's been a giant learning curve for me. I jumped on a crocodile and it was a bad jump under the water. Whack! Hit me in the head. Scarred me here. I got scars all over my face. Terry tore my ear in half. No two fingers are the same. They've been snapped, split, chomped, nails ripped off. Have a look at my hands. Virtually scars on scars. You can't see the last bite because it's scar on scar. And this isn't some giant ego trip. Uh-uh. It's just that I've got to get the camera. I've got to be right in there. I have to get right fair smack into the action because this day has come where the audience, you, need to come with me and be there with that animal. If there's whales dying on the beach on the western side of Tasmania, I want to share it with you because if we can touch people about wildlife, then they want to save it. If you go to SeaWorld and you get to have an encounter with a dolphin, you want to save dolphins. Gone are the days of sitting back on the long lens on the tripod and looking at wildlife way over there. Uh-uh. Come with me. Share it with me. Share my wildlife with me. Because humans want to save things that they love. My job. My mission, the reason I've been put onto this planet, is to save wildlife. And I thank you for coming with me. There are many other clips and videos on YouTube if you would like to watch Steve Irwin in action. If you would like to read more about Steve Irwin's life, I recommend the following books. The first one is Steve and Me, written by his wife, Terry. It takes you on a lovely journey of their courtship, courtship and life together. Another one is called Crocodile Tears, the larger than life story of Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter. This was written by Cheryl Backstrom Guthrie. And for kids, we have part of the Who Was series called Who Was Steve Irwin by Dina Anastasio. This was published in 2010 and is geared for ages seven to nine years old. Our quote for today comes from Steve. He says, 
quote, whatever you want to do in this world, it is achievable. The most important thing that I've found that perhaps you could use is to be passionate and enthusiastic in the direction that you choose in life, and you'll be a winner, end quote. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. Coming up next will be an episode highlighting Temple Grandin. I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase Mindset Matters Podcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.